that you need. Oh, but I, and it's like, I don't understand what happens. I start with an empty suitcase and somehow with a very small amount of clothes, I end up filling it up. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kirsten. I am an entrepreneur, an expat, a freelance writer, a coach, and my mission in life is to help people think differently, specifically on issues related to travel, money, personal development, and sex. So in this video, my intention is to help you travel easier, lighter, more freely by sharing with you some travel hacks that I have learned personally through my experience and other hacks that I have learned from fellow travelers, fellow experts in the field. So if you're looking on, if you're a traveler and you're looking for ways to make things easier or you want to get started with traveling, these are some travel hacks and tips that you are not going to want to miss. So continue watching, don't click away and let's get into it. So this video has been inspired by an article that I wrote for Black Girl Nerds, and I will link the article in the description below. Um, but in that, or, so if you want, if you want to learn more travel hacks um, that I'm not gonna be sharing on this video, then check out that article, and it'll be really helpful. So the first hack that I want to talk about is related to like transportation and flights. So a couple different things. So when it comes to uh, choosing your flights or choosing a mode of transportation on where to go, if you really want like one of the biggest hacks I think on travel, on travel flights and deals is just being open to where you want to travel. And so there's a lot of other, um, there's a lot of websites in Skyscanner, I know is one of them, where it allows you to click a button that says go anywhere. So pretty much there's a lot of places that haven't, that are not super popular that have a low price range or have uh, low cost flights to get there. And it doesn't mean that these countries are unsafe or, or, you know, not fun to visit of course do your research but honestly if you want to save money and you want to just see parts of the world that many people have not seen before then you're gonna want to try to go to places that people don't commonly go to with that being said with flights if you're kind of like not wanting to step out of your comfort zone that much it's important that you get something called and i know that this has been spread around a lot of travel uh, communities and spaces is a VPN. So VPN will pretty much block your location because the search engines are smart and they'll pick up on your location. They sometimes will show you higher prices than what is actually there. So I just always suggest when you're getting, um, when you're searching for flights, um, check for a VPN. Uh, make sure you have a VPN. Uh, I think I have Express VPN. They're pretty reasonable. And then once you have that VPN in place, you can change your location. And then when you change your locations, you will see the prices change in your flights. Another thing with flights, which really helps me when I first started traveling is price alerts. So I think Kayak does them. Um, I can't remember what others, I think Google does them as well. But a lot of travel uh, sites that show different airplanes airplanes a lot of travel sites that show different airlines and different flights will do something called price alert so if you go online and you see that woo those tickets are really high to go to new york or hawaii or mexico or wherever you want to go you can set a price alert and when that price goes down you will get an email and it will show you the prices and some of the i think kayak is really good where i'll tell you like it's good to buy now or it's good to wait and things like that. So that really helped me when I first started traveling in within the country and abroad is to set those price alerts. Another thing that really helped me when I was traveling um, this past summer, I spent a month in Valencia, Spain, which is one of my favorite countries in Spain. And I have a good friend who lives there and she helped me out with this travel hack of downloading 
the local app for transportation. So in Valencia, I believe it's M E M T Valencia. So whatever, if it's like a bus or a metro system, try to download that city's um, app. And what will, that will do is give you accurate times. Google Maps is really helpful in a lot of situations, but it doesn't always give you the accurate times for public transportation. So if you use the app for that city, you can get accurate times and kind of better plan out your your trips, you know, traveling within a certain city. There's also apps called Move It uh, Omeo, uh, which I've used as well too for like trains and buses as well. So having those local apps really make a difference. Another thing that I didn't do that I wish I would have done is if you know that you're going to be in a city for a long time, if you're a slow traveler like me, uh, you want to try to probably get like a monthly pass or get like uh, buy 10 trips in you know for the for a certain price instead of just instead of just relying on buying you know a single trips like in Valencia a single bus ride is like 125 a dollar and a dollar a euro and 25 cents which is really cheap but when you're going back and forth coming and going those little numbers can add up so it's easier just to buy a package of trips and a lot of metro stations offer this too in the bigger cities obviously a lot of this information applies to cities that have somewhat of a well-developed public transportation system when i was in panama the system was literally in some cases um the system was literally show up at the side of the road and wait for a bus to come by there was no set time or schedule um, but in those places where it, or it's a little bit more developed with their public transportation you definitely want to see if there is a local app that you can download The next travel tips is going to be around packing. I'm trying to create a new story. My old story was that I am a terrible packer and I over and I always overpack. My new story is I'm trying to say that I can pack efficiently. I can pack light. I pack what I need. Oh, but I and it's like. I don't understand what happens. I start with an empty suitcase and somehow with a very small amount of clothes, I end up filling it up. So anyways, things that have helped me get better and improve my packing strategies um, is because in, I know that there's a lot of people that pack a lot of things because they want the Instagram photos and they want... Um, you know, to have different outfits and they want to wear different outfits every day. Kudos to you. If you want to do that, that's great. But I personally get tired of lugging around suitcases and backpacks. I just want to go and get to my place and enjoy it. So a couple of things that have helped me is one, rolling your uh, clothes instead of folding it, trying to roll your clothes. So what I do is I'll layer an outfit and then I'll roll it up. And that takes up less space than trying to fold clothes and stack them on top of each other. My mother um, recently told me that she bought some packing cubes and you can uh, get them online. And she said that they have really helped her with her last trip. So that's going to be my next purchase is buying packing cubes. I have also seen uh, the like vacuum packs where you put in your clothes and you kind of suction it. Um, what is it called? Air suction. You kind of suck the air out of the bag so it becomes really flat. I did that when I was moving and that was really helpful. Um, so I would suggest getting packing cubes or those uh, like the suction pads. I don't know what the technical name of them is for. Um, but you want to try to reduce as much space as you can because really and truly no one shows, everyone shows themselves like, you know, with their suitcase in the airport. But depending on where you're traveling, sometimes you might have to walk a good distance to get to your hotel or your hostel or Airbnb. And it's just not fun lugging a suitcase 
up a hill. I've, there's definitely been some like really big hills that I've had to lug, a, you know, a backpack and a suitcase and a bag, and it's just it's just not fun. And when you're in a rush, it's really not fun. So my advice is to just try to condense the contents in your suitcase with like packing cubes, or just pack less. Try to get like staple outfits. So, you know, um, get, you can bring your like black dress, but then bring different accessories like a hat or a scarf if you want to change up your look. And that's the thing to, to me. I can wear the same thing over and over again, but I do like to change up my look. Uh, so I find bringing like a scarf or a hat or bringing, you know, a pair of jeans and with different tops something bring staple pieces that you can mix and match so you don't have to worry about bringing different outfits okay so next travel tip i'm going to talk about is around money so let's talk just let's talk first about like the basics of like money and so if you're going to a country with a different currency than the US or accepts a different currency, then first and foremost, you always want to check the currency rate uh, in one of the exchange rate. So that way, when you get to that place, if, when you do have the exchange bills, you kind of know what you're going to be getting and you don't get ripped off. The easiest thing to do is one, don't exchange money at the airport. Uh, that's kind of a common rule, I think most uh, travelers know, but if you don't know, now you do. The exchange rates at the airport are incredibly high and not worth the, the price. So what you do, what you can do is first check with your local bank and um, to see uh, what their overseas fees and policies are. I have Charles Schwab, which I love and have had them for my entire life abroad. And what's really great about them is that they reimburse your ATM fees at the end of the month. So if so you do get charged initially, but you get reimbursed at the end of the month. So I like to start with like a little bit of cash. I like to have like a little bit of cash on me in the beginning. So when I get to the airport, I will use my ATM card to take out a good amount of money um not too much but i think it's always important to have a little bit of cash on you because you that a lot of places definitely to take cards but you never know you might end up in a situation where you need cash so it's always good to have a little bit of cash on you when i get to my place that i'm going to stay and if i feel safe and secure there i will take out more money because what i like to do is i like to hide money or bring like an extra card and i will hawk and uh, hide some cash just because you never know uh, what might happen even if you're in a very safe place and nothing happens and everything stays with you there's still a there's still a chance that you might get somewhere and your card doesn't work or there's not service uh, to run your card through the reader so it's always good to kind of hide some cash on you also while you're out and about buying locally will help you save a lot of money um, so one thing that I learned while traveling is that a lot of local places, not local places, a lot of tourist places are kind of getting more sneaky when it comes to, to tourists. So a lot of the times that I, and my friend experienced this when she went to Portugal, she went to a restaurant in Lisbon and saw the prices um, outside of the restaurant on like a sign outside. And then when she went into the restaurant, uh, she noticed that the prices were different. So off, so sometimes what they might do is they might change, if they know that you're an English speaker, they might change the prices for you. They might send, um, give you a menu with different prices on it. So always kind of, if you can, Double check the prices uh, to you know make sure that you're getting a local price, and to check your receipts. This happened to me uh, quite often. Not quite often. This happened to me a couple of times uh, when I was in Valencia, where I got overcharged. Not a lot of money. Um, like I got charged like an extra beer, 
um, that I didn't have and I got charged just like little things so always like look over your receipts and like, again luckily the euro and the US dollar is very similar but if you go to places like Colombia or Mexico when they like work with thousands uh, you know like 5,000 pesos is like one dollar or something like that you want to really make sure that you understand the exchange rate um, so that when you are paying in cash or you're doing a conversion, you're paying for something, you know that you know the actual price that you are paying. My for. final my final travel tip is to be very conscious of where your money is going. A lot of the I one of the reasons why I love living in Spain and I live in the in a smaller town is it's really easy to shop locally. And I know that if I go to a local shop, if I go to a restaurant, my money is going directly towards the people that I see and the people that are working in that establishment. That is not always the case in many countries. So when you are in another country, and especially if you notice there are disparities between, if you can note the disparities in social classes, Definitely try to connect to local people and figure out where is the best place to spend your money. I remember when I was in Mexico, one of my solo trips to Mexico to Puerto Vallarta, I remember thankfully one of the tour guides told me that there is this shop called like Equis or O Equis or something like that. And it looked like just a regular like convenient shop. You know, I can buy water, I can buy snacks, I can buy little things, kind of like a 7-Eleven. Um, if you're familiar with those and I thought it was fine. I was like, great. It was so convenient. However, I was told by my tour guide that those, that, that money doesn't go back into the country. Like it doesn't support the local people. It just goes to some high class, you know, business corporation, you know, evil corporations. So it doesn't go directly to, um, the people. So be conscious of that. I know that it can be really easy when you're a tourist and uh, and you're visiting a place and kind of just you see something convenient and you automatically go towards it because it's familiar. But make sure that, you know, that you if you have an opportunity to pay to put your money towards a local economy, do that because these beautiful places would not exist or they won't exist if we keep giving money to the big corporations that are pushing the local people out. So just be conscious of where your money goes and it'll help you to not only support people that really genuinely want you to come visit their country, but it also will support the sustainability of the country that you are visiting. So I hope that you enjoyed those travel tips. Again, if you want more travel tips, check out my article and comment below which travel tip you found most helpful. And I would love to know if you're an experienced travel, even if you're a novice traveler, what have you learned? What are some travel tips and hacks that you have learned through your travels, through your experience? Leave the comment below so that you can help other travelers on their journey to explore the world. And if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and push the subscribe button to get more videos around travel and living your best life and thinking differently about the world around us. Ciao for now.